uh, our, our, our employment because they also want that they call it builders and services and those services are the humans that are doing that although we have the impact uh, we have the the, the the influence or the fact of technology so the global capital indicator normally was launched uh, in 2018 and the, the purpose was to measure the amount of human investment human capital that a child born can experience or can expect to have uh, by uh, 18 years old so it means from when a man is mature enough to be into the employment, to go into to employment. And at that time, I know, for one, and I think we get the IED when we have 16, so other countries have their own definition. But this is the average for countries, so when a person is considered as mature. I think uh, uh, in Europe, most of our Europe countries, they do, uh, in their families, they do what they call a firework birthday. Firewall birthday it means it's the last birthday of a child experience when he's living with his fathers or his parents. So beyond this age, the, a, a child is under provision of the family, but above, so the child now becomes independent and then he can live by own. So this is now the investment uh, a country has to make. So when a child is born up to the age of maturity, where he can now uh, start to contribute to the, 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 the productivity of, of the country, the production. So uh, now, this is what we call now human capital index. So that amount of investment in a human people to the age when that person starts to be a productive. So on worldwide, a child born in 2020, for example, can experience on average to be 50, 56% as productive as she could be when she's grown up. So it means uh, for the uh, 20, for example, a child born, he cannot start uh, uh, productivity to, I mean, production, to be productive up to 50 to the, 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 the different uh, countries and different income level of countries uh, for its human capital uh, index and you can see East Asia as we, we have European, Europe, Central, Latin America and Caribbean, Middle East, uh, North Africa and North America, South Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, for young students, what I also can do in, in the geopolitical context will not go much on that, but uh, you can imagine having uh, the same continent divided into two. So we have North Africa, of Saharan Africa. So I guess we have an impact um, politically, but let us continue with economics. With economics, uh, with economics, you can see now that we are on, on, on the low, lagging behind the other other capital development. So we have the, the 0.4 while others are above and we can see in North America they are even around the thing to uh, in the human capital development. We, considering the employment because those people are in, and the investment are the one that will be translated into the employment status when they're growing old and when they're able to work. So we can see the figures in general are we can see number with the, at the global level, we have employed people that are on 3.3 billion, which are equal to 53 billion. And now, going back to uh, 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 inflation uh, rates or under transition figures, we can have time related employment, which, which is 165. Uh, I can explain to uh, the students that is like a, a people or person working less time than what he can work for. So if someone can work eight hours, eight hours a day, but now he's working five hours because the nature of the work gives him or her five hours only to work for. Uh, and that employment it rises and it is according to his capacity because we have time related and employment capacity related. So, so, but they are working now. I mean, they can work 100% of their time, but they can work, work and we have 
30 percent of the entire population, which is really a big number, and we have uh, unemployment, which is 40 percent, and uh, potential both of those are people translated to to employment uh, around 188 million. Uh, uh, yeah. But this is a group that they need to meet. It's really hard. Uh, there's different factors that are, that are uh, un behind with these statistics or with these figures, which we will not go into the details. I think those uh, who are studying employment and the unemployment uh, in supply in labor market, whether on the technological innovation, three years to 24 years, they are one pyramid across the globe. So we find that uh, in Africa, that's where we have really low down uh, in, the, in the income, high income country and the upper income countries, they are, they are having more elderly people than young people. I think here we have a lot of African and Asian people. So youth in employment, they are around four. Uh, and also uh, those that are uh, in education or not, not employed, they are 42%. And which is a five oh, so they were, they were, of course we have twenty two and this is the the figures we we've uh, taken from the uh, international labor organization in their uh, report awarding drug through twenty formal employment and formal employment for example starting there so we have uh, thirty nine percent of people that are in formal employment, students are yeah, in employment that we are, uh, I think I can explain it uh, in the two forms so that they can uh, understand it clearly. In, in, uh, yeah, in formal uh, sector, formal sector, formal employment means that they are, uh, they are complying employment laws. So they are giving taxes, they are registered their employment, they, they employees, they are giving the pension and other characteristics. But there are people who can have employment in the formal sector and informal sector, formal employment and informal employment. So some people can have formal employment in, in the informal sector. Which registered anywhere that is not known by uh, a country's uh, registration or a country if we take we say like it's in a company that is not registered in enterprise or that company we we'll call them we we'll call it informal sector it means is working in formal sector it's formal company but that company can hire a person and then give him a contract and other requirements, but the employees or its employees are, are not having contract, are not receiving, uh, are not just receiving medical insurance, are not, uh, they are not paying their patients. So it's really that person is, is inform, he has informal employment within formal sector. To boost our economy and employment, we and also take a attention to this big and a great war in every country's economy. So not only in one, because in one we have really had informal employment in one state, but it's global, it's not something to give us and make that the war the, the world could pay attention to informal sector to be supported so that you can contribute. Left hand, you have wage. Uh, salaries uh, of workers, you have own company workers, you have contribution to when you can see the, uh, the proportion of work is really the bigger than other different, uh, proportion where we have uh, 53% and uh, when you see all of that people, no matter to shift for entrepreneurship and, uh, and the business because we really uh, uh, have a, a big number which we needed to, to increase. So when you look into the, 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 the poverty uh, and non poverty, and this is I'm a part of uh, because we need uh, to find a country. So we have SDGs, NST1, and NST1, to, there is a poverty eradication, or just uh, country without. So I uh, think that we need to 
rural because this global and we have most uh, developing country and middle income country the population are uh, uh, high. We have also uh, the moderate poor and extremely poor. So I think uh, uh, as you can see, poor, extremely poor are the part of those that are can not afford uh, one dollar a day. I think it's that everyone knows that those people that cannot access to one dollar a day. So uh, going to labor productivity, So, and uh, on labor productivity, uh, the goal you can see that uh, the income. So, when you look into this figure, I figure that you concentrate my efforts. You can see the yellow one is average, and so we have a, a high, we have. Labor average unemployment rates means not those people that are uh, entirely in employment. But when you look into it, we found that uh, we, which means we have a good number of people in entirely employment. Why is high production? Why? Because of the status of the employment. But this is that I want to mean that we have. Uh, uh, but what proportion of that will affect to the uh, the productivity of the, of, uh, of the country? So, and uh, now I can talk about is the human factor development uh, we live in one context. I think uh, in the regional outlook is called welcome. Uh, the bubble uh, outlook, and then we can now go to human capital movement uh, uh, within our country. And, uh, and uh, I think, as you can see, we have human capital and uh, human capital pre COVID. Uh, this is information that was uh, from the World Bank reports about human capital. Development index and uh, it's human. You can go to next next slide. I think uh, human capital development index to value uh, uh, for 19 0 0.54, which puts the country in a lower human development categories positioning. It is. It means going to the world countries, 189 countries globally, so we are linked as 160, which means we are really low. We are still really low to the human uh, capital development. And what I can also say, and what this information means, is that we still have a long journey to go. We have a target to have the uh, economy. Uh, build on a foundation of its population, but when we look at the investment and the uh, dream too is to have the population driving the economy of the country, is to have the economy of the country lying on your, being a marriage based economy. We need more uh, in a human capital development so that we can have people uh, with potential so that can do, drive this economy. So we can't still means there's a lot of things that a country needs to do. So between 1992 to 2004. So of course it's something to 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 be helpful, but it's not, it's not something that we can now uh, boast that something great because uh, as you can see uh, although we 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 have included uh, the from 24% and 54%, but you are still at behind the other countries, between countries, uh, gives a We need to invest more. So, on um, health growth, uh, it's mean not stand to this late. It's mean people, uh, I think uh, I can say, we need a lot of 100. Uh, 
38, I mean, 38 out of 100 children are stunted. And so they are risk, we have uh, 38 out of 100. In risk, you could have more could be for permanent for for the rest of their life. So I think which is really something big. And I think when you look at physically, it's not really physical. I think when most in the room we used to see people just not growing physically, but it works on psychology, but also it works on brain. So that person has a brain gray, has psychological gray to fight malnutrition, to fight all those stuff in the children. It is really something great because if we, if the country does not affect its balance, its balance of payment, its economy, it's competitive with other countries because we have to, the country have to invest more to fight all those uh, things. Positively on the production instead of costing positively on the production. So I think we can also, the country so those people, those population will help the country to grow. I think you have seen it with the other countries like Asia, Singapore, and China. And those are countries that are at the same stage with African countries during the colonization. Asia was colonized as Africa has colonized. But today, so Africa is still under colony, but also even Asia is coming to colonize. Uh, here, we need, the country needs to fight against this, uh, this, this community in the power and the standard of children so that we can have children that are potentially and productive for the country in the future. And also, you can see the health spendings, uh, spend was for than both the region average because we spend more on, I think that's why we have seen the growth, the increasing that is beyond 119% of the human development index because the country has also increased and uh, the government, this, but also comparing to other countries, uh, we are still down. We need to increase more for education. And I think also we can look, uh, it's compared with also the size of the population and uh, the size of the population in other countries and the income. But, uh, what it means that to have a real uh, human development uh, or capital, human capital development, we need to increase both expendi public expenditure on education, on health, because it gives uh, a, a fit person with a fit psychology and a fit brain. So, and that person will be very positive, will increase productivity uh, and hence economic growth, because the productivity is a part of supply side of factors that are affecting economic growth. So I think this is the reason why expenditure on health and expenditure on education is really very key important if we want to grow our economy based in the productivity. And also, uh, another thing is that one and human uh, cap capital development trend. And, and when you look at human capital development trend uh, for Rwanda, uh, starting in 1990 up to 2019, we can find we have increased normally life expectancy at birth. This means that the average life, average years a person can live has increased from 33.4269. So we are still growing, which is really a good indicator and gives a hope even to our one. So between 19 and 19, so one has life expectancy at birth increased by 30. 5.0 is a total by 2.7 years expected years of the schooling increased also to 5.5. Also, Rwanda, how Rwanda stands, but also uh, what I can say also we need this more increasing because the more increase this uh, the the the, the aim to, to the economy. You can see demographic and social economic indicators how the size of population, and I think this, this is by 2018, and you can see the dense uh, urban population. Not even the urban population, maybe I can talk about also. In general, one is that the, 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 the most dense country in, in, in Africa, so it means we have in, in it's mean proportion of the ratio male and females. Why I put this uh, information is that they they the future. They are the one that helps you forecast how the future one will look like, but also how the situation of, of human development 
because they are looking at demographic and social. We can see that life is male, female. And, and here, what I want to lay on is this uh, people means number of students, pupils in primary education. We have uh, 54%. And, and 54%, according to the UNESCO, the minimum should, the maximum should be 20 per, 20 people per teacher. It means 20 students. But here with our primary, by 2008, a teacher, which means that, that the quality of education they will receive will be different. Will be different. Uh, it means a classroom contains people will have different knowledge. I have been a teacher somehow, somewhere. And I know how it is. Sometimes with this number, you can even you cannot even know the name of your students. Only you can find them on the paper you are marking. And sometimes you cannot know the performance of every chief student. What you will know, and and what I knew, I have been a teacher is that you will know five best students and worst students. The middle student, you will not you will not know them. And then this is this is bad because you can't help. And what you need is to help a student to grow and to perform. So, Five the best one, or not ten best one. If you are, and also we know the five worst ones. So there is five and the best, the, the first five. So, which means this is uh, gives a uh, kind of implication about the quality of education, and that quality of education also reflect to the quality of that person will give once he graduated and he entered into employment. So that's why we find that we, although. Uh, they are always a negative impact and positive impact for everything. So with the COVID, they have extended classrooms. I think they will also increase number of teachers. So uh, then we have a num few number of students per teacher where they can if you have a, a, a quality uh, education where a teacher can make a follow-up to every student, know his capacity and how to improve the capacity. Student, all seven students. It's really amazing. It's a desk. Even even seating is really an issue. So with these uh, uh, indicators, it it is trans economy because the quality of education is the will give the quality of employment. The quality of the employment will give the quality of economic growth. So which means uh, there is a lot of to improve within here on the on the primary level. I think you, this is also the same figure showing that. Uh, uh, a high number of of of, uh, of students uh, students per teacher ratio you can see in primary there are a lot uh, in 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 say second read you can see they are moderate and 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 in the university and but uh, also this thing we will see it will be written the employment we find that most of employed people most of category in employment they have only primary education because there's a lot of dropout after the end of the primary due to the fact, different facts, uh, factors, whether the uh, parents, whether the high school education was and the, those previous period were experienced and their students wouldn't have their, their, their secondary education. So uh, I think uh, there's a lot of to appreciate within the current development of education, but in the previous years, there were different uh, hampering factors of, for students, young students to go to a uh, universe. And uh, I can most of them have to experience the, the money and what they're getting them from the objective of the education and the other different factors. So uh, here, what I also uh, going to is now to relate the information we have seen to the development of the human uh, uh, capital or just all the investment about human capital within the labor market and employment within our context. And uh, here I can start, maybe I will not take much time to this, is uh, this indicator about the situation, labor market situation, because this is a pre-COVID, before COVID, and, and, uh, and we have this statistics. And we have here the working population from age 16 and the above. Uh, our employment labor law, so go to employment uh, because we have what we call child labor uh, law. It means uh, labor that restricts 
but but some uh, smooth improvement. People begin uh, uh, working age population. We have seven million point two, uh, and comparing to the entire uh, entire population of twelve million something, and uh, among this means there are five populations uh, people ranging from at the end but also still working on the uh, retirement but here we, we exclude yeah people below 16 and above retirement age but outside of labor force we have three point we have also labor force 3.8 million labor force special rate which equals to 53 percent means those that are and the labor force, those that are participated in employment, uh, can participate in employment are uh, 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 53.4 percent. But we have produced is mean those that are working in subsistence agriculture, uh, subsistence staff. I mean, subsistence staff, not the agriculture. I, I said agriculture, but everything that you do for your survival, that's we call subsistence. That's why we say subsistence staff producers. I mean, you can even. Be, make sure that the purpose of making sure not to generate money is just for you to survive it's not a business you're doing is just survival as a western staff uh, producers we are comparing to the above indicator uh, above fact have you seen it's me outside of the labor force of 3.3 million we have two categories we have those that are doing a subsistence staff Subsistence are the means they are not involved in the rest. The purpose of doing their thing is just to survive, it's not to produce goods and services to sell on, on the market. So, and also we have also other that are outside of the labor force, which is 7, 49.7 percent, uh, uh, which do know what they do, but they are not the house of the, of the labor force. So, two categories they're employed and they're unemployed. Employed that the, those that have they pay you a monthly or weekly salary or weekly wage, and also you can do your own business, but it is a purpose to make profit. And those people that are seeking to, to work, seeking employment, who are able to work, who are available for working, whether for pay or profit, but they don't, they don't any, any company to, that wants to employ you, so you are there. So that's unemployed. And that's where we have now the employee population among 3.9 is right. And according to macroeconomy, I think you, you most of students are economists and you know macroeconomy indicators there, there is employment and objective of employment uh, indicators we find. Uh, if uh, I mean, we have found. as low as possible or just plus and we have employment and employment to keep it all having full employment we have also the objective to keep it balanced because deficit or trade surplus and trade trade to balance this and we have also income distribution which should be fair so i think uh, macroeconomic uh, indicators this employment factor, something that we can see that is really a, a challenge, it's a problem because we have to have, you know, there is a, if you're a Canadian who are saying that there is no free employment because although uh, work is available and people are, want to work for the purpose that they do when they have enough for them. So, employed, not because uh, he, there is no job, but also, he doesn't want it to have enough for him and also you can see the structure employment the structural employment as you know there is nothing by coming in there is change because the world the world keep changing we are in a dynamic they they they, 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 they i mean thing is causing some kind of unemployment i think that's why in asia until employment and, uh, so this employment also has categories. We have primary education, we have second education for unemployment. You can see that people in primary education they are unemployed and 
below, to me, without education, they have high unemployment because three percent unemployment. Those in the secondary and the low upper class have twenty two percent, but we have also tertiary education and employment. 6.9, which means that the more you advance in the education, the more you, have, you increase your chance to be employed. So that's why from primary education, secondary, university, the in, uh, employment, unemployment is key. It's, mean, it's, cre it's keeping uh, decreasing. So, which means uh, the more you, you advance in the education, the more with an, uh, less, you have chance to, to be employed. And I think this is not, it's not something you can explain with you, it's, it's really about outside. So uh, our people educated. And then we have 37.4% uh, agriculture, are uh, working in agriculture, and it says 18.7 in industry, 43.9 in services. So it means services and agriculture are the ones that participate, that are consuming a lot of employees, that are consuming a lot of uh, supply of, of, of the labor market. So we need to put more power, more efforts in those services that have chance to consume a lot of a lot of uh, uh, people. And uh, I think uh, this this information as a uh, um, Taken from the National Institute of Statistics, but it was before COVID. I think late. So in August, so there was the relationship between employment and employment, and this is I have said unemployment in above in above a slide. But here we are now. How this unemployment is related to economic growth because most of economic growth is is considered is just. Um, um, is analyzed or is looked at analyzing the GDP of the country. So, uh, open as law say that there is a um, um, relationship this in the GDP, it means there's a lot of investment, there's a lot of productivity, there's a lot of so, and that market will consume uh, a variable labor force, in pro and which will and then the unemployment will reduce. But if there is a high unemployment, the, the GDP will reduce because those people in the outside the market and uh, this will also generate really lower GDP. I think this is the relationship between employment and uh, the and uh, the production of the country. So increase by which it means uh, the outcome of is the percentage by which uh, national growth national product or gross domestic product changes when unemployment falls by one <coughs> percent is all the country's GDP falls and uh, the opposite is true. So means so the GDP growth rises uh, and employment will fall down. So if we have now a high GDP, the country needs to do what it takes so that we can increase our 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 our, 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 our GDP, then unemployment will be yeah, in examining the relationship between unemployment and GDP in one that we will use elasticity approach which we mathematically works open as well to so I think here we will have the the Percentage change in employment, percentage change in GDP. In 2017, 2018, 2019, we have average. So, and then we have calculated uh, this is a data from NICR, and we have uh, it means that here we have that by it means that for the GDP, employment should grow to the uh, percent given the trend that the if the economy seems to grow with the same, it means the assumption is means that the 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 the, 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 the relationship between and and, and employment is linear. It means uh, it, considering the past information, it means we are forecasting we are forecasting that if the, the growth continues, one increase in GDP will increase the employment by one point three percent. And here we have also in economic distribution and contribution to GDP uh, data in 2000. And uh, as you can see, starting with the income we have as of the employment, we have wholesale that have 15, we have construction that have 10% of employment, manufacturing, uh, activities of households as employment. 
six uh, percent and transport five percent others or keep ten percent and and also what i show you is that you have the big percentage of employment in agriculture and which we need which means somehow agriculture needs to be paid attention because you got a lot of employment but also when looking into the gdp contribution it means how the sector economic sector contributes to gdp to economic growth of the country. The same agriculture that, that uses a lot of labor is, 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 uh, is contributing 20%. And uh, we have uh, a horse that is contributing 9, construction contributing 7, manufacturing contributing 8, uh, household activities contributing 5, others contributing for 1. For 1, it's mean other activities out of this it combined other activity that is not in this their head racing their higher or other activity which we didn't mention here that are consuming they are consuming 20 percent of river force but they are contributing uh um for one percent of the GDP. it means they are contributing much more considering they, they use it means they are more productive. I think if you can analyze that way, they don't have any education. So they have 47 percent. It means uh, those people, uh, the, good, the reason why they are more employed is because they, there is no requirement for them. So if, if a, a, a job requires educated people, there will be these terms of requirements, especially if terms of requirements for them. So that's why they are most consumed on the labor market. So they are now 47, but also that their productivity is well compared to those with education. I think explain that. But you can why those with the no level of education are having a, a, a consumable. So it's because there is no requirement for them. There is no terms of reference for recruiting them. So that's why we have a big number. But also uh, primary, there's also the requirement all terms of for them is really lower. So that's the reason why we have now a huge number in primary education. But so we have 6% in, in lower secondary, upper secondary, we have 10% in university, 7%. I think most of you guys, you will you be, you will be, Seven percent because you will be in the upper in a university and and, and uh, for employment we believe that it will continue to 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 uh, uh, contribute to productivity of the country and also increase this number for uh, employment by education and so which means generally one and the other more level completed at all so it means out of hundred percent that are employed. Seven seven percent have no education or primary education, which means you now you can now activity of them. You no, know? so and also you can also see the export of services. Rwanda is now planning to have within coming directives. So because we want Rwanda to export services, so how will we export services without the so if seven seven percent are building our market labor market. How are we going to export services? So it means there's a lot of to do. There's a lot of to and there is a lot of journey to go. So and um, another and see fifty three percent forty fifty four point two fifty three. So we are still and uh, within two thousand seventeen two thousand eighteen two thousand nineteen we we don't have only the current state uh, to application also. You can still have forty four eighteen. 2018, yeah, there is increase, and 2019, uh, decrease compared to the previous uh, uh, employment to population ratio. We have unemployment, you can see how unemployment has reduced from 2017 because uh, there was 17.3, 17.5. Also, I can say in this employment uh, cases that depending on the investment of private sector and the government, so that's how now you can see this movement from the, 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 the unemployment. Because once the government have a lot of projects, like this we have during airport, uh, we have uh, other different pro big projects, so we find that the employment has increased. But when there is no investment, it's right. But because uh, the project of the government are uh, more, uh, let me say, uh, season or so it's 
I think we need more private sector to be involved in, 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 in uh, because they are making profits, they need them to be involved in investment so that the number of the unemployment can keep, uh, unemployment can keep reducing. Time to unemployment, uh, it has uh, reduced and increased and reduced. The average, I think like we can shift for this table, I think it's 19. You can see in February, March, April, May, and then I mean, we will talk about the April. Uh, this April is when you were uh, in lockdown, and thus you have seen that the unemployment has, uh, unemployment has, a, has, has increased because this is an unemployment. It means the number of people who are working, they was reduced because you know, it's essential service that kept working, but also the same people who are working from home, but others, their job have 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 deleted. Let me say that deleted or just have, have finished. So, and you can see this is when we have now forty five point nine percent of unemployment. So meaning a half of of people in employment were not working. So in doing the May twenty, I mean May twenty. Use it up to 16 percent. But I think within also this this current situation we are in, we don't have now that debt. But uh, I think improvement has increased because there is need there is this uh, ban of travel between districts and and between provinces. So and um, also going to impact of COVID. Uh, while I'm uh, concluding my my part of the presentation, uh, there is impact of COVID on. Labor market uh, uh, on the one labor market, uh, raise mobility and mortality are uh, influencing challenges to possibility to increase unemployment, especially among vulnerable groups, society, and informal sector. So, mobility, mobility is the status of sickness. I think uh, the number of people who are sick on the set and mortality, you know, those the number of people who are dying. I think because of this, this pandemic, there is a number of people sick, and I think today. New cases, what they mean, they, it's exponential for them. They are not, they, they are not there in quarantine. 166 that those people who are new cases, but also the people they, who they are they were in touch with. So, people who are working in the informal, informal sector. So, COVID also 19 has pushed people for unemployment and employment and also uh, working. Uh, you work every day, but the the, the amount of revenue to from the poverty sector, from the poverty like you're still under one dollar a day. So that's we call to working poverty. It means you are not just out of the poverty. So that's why we call working poverty. On the supply side, so, uh, there is experience demand because when we analyze. Markets always because they are your new your students. We, we look supply side and the demand side. This uh, uh, ban of travels uh, uh, of our business that now business have have have, have stopped working. Intermediate groups all inputs to work in the industry and the industry have shut down the employees. Tourism, hospitality industry. Factor they 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 are the side that causing employment also. It's used on supply service, although they are the worst. In the meaning, they will not have a job. Uh, also, uh, in some businesses, many workers were lied off. Terminated their contract to you. Uh, also, some found their wages and salaries, which particular pushes people to, 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 to go to their homes and now uh, come inside. I think we, when we look impact on, on, on government revenues, for example, there is no limited people in the diaspora, they are not sending money in their countries, it's last. When you look in, in, in your trade, there is ban of travel and countries has 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 no impact on employment because it the, it is done by people and it has impact on employment. But also when looking also the, the market of uh, it, 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 to me, so we, we are going to the same situation like after the world in a reconstruction of, of the economy, world might. So it's, there's a lot of uh, measures that country needs to take so that we can uh, revive our economy. And so what I don't say about the, 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 the other that was responsible for the research and the economy, the money they Federation of the in country. Right? So, uh, thank you so much for your attention and uh, my friend, uh, Ray Andre.
Okay, thank you, Ben, for a good presentation. So, as uh, my remain among the larger countries to do manufacturing development, and the many workers are still human capital development. In the side of the labor market, we found that the big challenge is mismatching between the labor demand and the labor supply. Uh, and, uh, uh, and what we say, the size of the big the small is around the 80 percentage. That's why we have always the problem for the formality and the people in the labor market. To, uh, to, to resolve this problem, the government of Rwanda put a place effort put in place to, to set the problem of unemployment, and the, to build uh, the human capital, human capital in Rwanda. Uh, this is uh, the rationale for the vision 2050, uh, to the commitment of uh, uh, many agenda for this SDGs, and the price declaration, yes, vision, and the uh, African Union agenda, uh, this part, you know, and uh, in the 20, in the 2030, and as uh, my colleague said, even if we still uh, the last countries in human capital, our Population 2020 billion. Even if government will take the measures, we have uh, to consider that uh, our population is growing. And, and uh, as you know, uh, doubling the current growth uh, to move from rich to our middle income by 2025 and the high income by 2050. Um, the kid uh, the from the World Bank said that focus on some certain sector can help the government to achieve the establishment. And uh, it shows also some uh, some point that you have to take consideration, which build, building the total demand capital is around the point zone strike. And uh, when you talk the growth of the private sector, uh, this is the uh, that the government of Rwanda needs to uh, to build to achieve the the the, 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 the. Uh, <coughs> Capital to make sure that the high quality and the standard of life of our population is still one priority of the target. That's why uh, is still the first strategy that the, uh, this is the vision 2050. Uh, for the next we have the National Strategy of Transformation, which has three pillars, economic transformation, which has also the social development of the government. There's some more uh, unfair business. The, uh, we go the job creation and economic transformation. Economic transformation is to create the job, and uh, we need we need the productive job. And uh, the vision of 2020 targets the creation of uh, two two hundred thousand orphan jobs per year, and uh, the 
we continue with this target, but the, we, we say that the government made the productive job, the creation of 1.5 million productive jobs in the next seven years. And uh, when you look at can generate around uh, Two point five hundred thousand. Yeah. What strategy? This strategy has um, let me put 